Isn't it hilarious when flat earthers think they know all the facts about Earth better than anyone else? I mean seriously, it's peak Dunning-Kruger, isn't it? They memorise a few of the facts without understanding the why. And they often think they know more about the uh, globe model than us globies. Well today, one man thinks just that too. And the more he talks, the more that it's pretty clear he doesn't have a clue. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Right, before we get on with today's video, a quick word from me about a Simon Dan book club update. We have now passed 150 founding members. The book club starts in March. The first box is shipped then. What you get is a book, a science book curated by me. So I've picked it. You get a gift. You get in the first box, you get a founding member gift. You get an A5 card with all my notes, plus a QR code that will lead you to a private video about the choice that I made, plus access to a Discord server as well. And if that's not for you, there's a digital option too. So if you don't want to actually get the book delivered, you can get all the digital stuff, get the book yourself, and you'll still have access to all the online goodies. Take a look in the description or go to simandanbookclub.com to have a look at all the details and make yourself a founding member of the Simon Dan Book Club. Thanks very much. Okay then, on with today's video, which is a couple of reels from a flat earther called True Earth 911. His first reel is him having a go at me, because he thinks he knows more about the globe model than I do. Ah, oh, bless him. Here we go. Many times. How big do you think we understand the Earth to be? It's not 100 metres across. It's 40,000 kilometers in circumference. As we said many times, the curve is negligible at that size. You're never going to see it in a submarine. Dear, oh dear. How many times? He doesn't even know the circumference of the Earth. Dear, oh dearie me. The circumference, Dan. I know your whole model off by heart. The Earth's circumference is 40. 1075 kilometers which is 24,900 miles in circumference my word when i said 40,000 kilometers in that short that was a rounded figure i would have thought that was obvious i have stated the exact figure in several videos in the past that 75 kilometer difference by the way changes nothing the point was scale, not surveying precision. Earth is enormous. At that size, curvature over small distances is negligible. You will not see it in a submarine, in a canal, or with a camera. Correcting a rounded number does not address the argument, it avoids it. The rotation speed is 1,040 miles per hour at the equator. And the Actually, it's 1,037.5 miles per hour at the equator. Maybe you should research the globe model a bit better. Orbit speed around the sun is 66,600 miles per hour. Actually, it's 66,616 miles per hour. You really should research the globe model a bit better. The solar system is shooting through the galaxy at 514,000 miles per hour. Actually, the sun orbits the Milky Way Galactic Center at an average speed between 492 and 520,000 miles per hour. You definitely should research the globe model a bit better. And the Milky Way is racing at over 1.3 million miles per hour. OK, I'll give you that one because you said over 1.3 million miles per hour. And on top of that, the curve that you swear by, it's meant to be curving at eight inches per mile squared, which means after 10 miles, the drop should be over 66 feet. After 100 miles, it should be more than 6,600 feet. The eight inches per mile squared line is a rough approximation, and flat earthers nearly always apply it wrong. First, it's not curve per mile, it's the drop from a tangent line. You're comparing the surface to a straight line that's leaving the surface. Secondly, okay, those numbers you said are fine, but they're not a prediction of what you'll see over water, because real viewing includes refraction, observer height, and target height. Yet, we still see a flat horizon, level bridges, and railways that disprove it every single time. They actually don't. Bridges and railways are built locally level, not globally flat. Engineers account for curvature automatically over long distances, often by sections. Over short spans, curvature is far smaller than construction tolerances. You don't notice it, you're not meant to. So don't tell me that I don't know your numbers. I know them probably better than you. 
Come on now, let's not be silly here. I just have the clarity to see that they don't add up. Dear, oh dear, do you know what I mean? Imagine thinking that repeating one number makes you a scientist. Knowing numbers isn't the same as understanding them. Science isn't chanting figures like spells. It's knowing what they mean, when they apply, and what assumptions go with them. Repeating eight inches per mile squared without understanding tangents, refraction, observer height, or reference frames is certainly not clarity. And the sad part is, his whole page is built on belittling people with a smirk and a school book quote. That's not science, that's ego. And his ego is chained to lies that he can't escape from. If pointing out scale, geometry and context counts as ego, then he's confusing explanation with arrogance. Science isn't about smirking and quoting textbooks. It's about actually understanding what the numbers mean. I never repeat figures to sound clever. I explain why they're used and how to apply them. Knowing a value is an insight, knowing when it matters is. If that threatens him, that's not my ego talking. That's his misunderstanding showing. But the irony of it all is that every time that he mocks us, flat earth researchers get stronger, sharper, and better with their productions. He's not shutting anyone down. He's fueling us. So really, it's more fool him. The irony cuts the other way, of course. Getting louder, slicker, or better edited isn't the same as getting more accurate. Production quality is not evidence. Repeating the same claims with better lighting doesn't make them stronger. It just makes the mistakes easier to see. What is he on about? Well, let's take this one step further, shall we, and see if he really does know our model better. Let's have a look at his next reel. All right, watch this. Boom. The truck just gets instantly crushed. Not because something hit it, not because it malfunctioned, but purely because of pressure versus vacuum. Not really, it's more pressure versus material. Yes, a rail car can be crushed if the air inside is removed. That's not vacuum magic. That's external air pressure doing exactly what it does. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch. That doesn't sound like much until you multiply it by the surface area. Your average rail car container has a surface area of 200,000 inches squared. Multiply that by 14.7 and you get over 3 million pounds of force, or 1,360 tonnes pressing inward. Remove that air inside and nothing's pushing back. The pressure outside, caused by a massive atmosphere on top of you, wins. And of course, the structure collapses. You see, when the air is sucked out, the outside pressure collapses the entire tanker like it's some sort of tin can. This is real physics, you know, that is observable reality. Could not agree more. What's your point here? Remember now, you know our model better than us. Now, I want you to keep this in mind whilst I show you a clip of NASA's own Don Petit being asked what would happen if there was a leak in space. Like on the space station, how many of these would you have? Oh, seven, because we have seven windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Again, what's your point? A rail car being crushed is an external pressure problem. The air outside is pushing in. The space station is the opposite. It's an internal pressure problem. Air pushing out. The ISS is designed for that. A rail car is not. The ISS has thick aluminium alloys, reinforced frames, rounded modules to distribute stress, and has designed pressure tolerances. A rail car is a thin sheet of steel with flat panels, built for stacking, not pressure. And it's not sealed for vacuum differentials. When the ISS has a leak, air escapes gradually. There's no instant explosion for a few reasons. The pressure difference is only 14.7 psi, the leak area is tiny and the flow rate is limited. We've seen this happen. The station doesn't implode or explode. It behaves exactly as physics predicts. Comparing a crushed rail car to the ISS is like comparing a tin can to a submarine. Same pressure, completely different engineering. Once again, the example confirms physics. It doesn't break it. You see, they can't explain the basic physics that we're showing you with your own eyes, yet they want you to believe that they're cruising around the biggest vacuum known to man without getting instantly crushed like this tanker. Why would you be crushed if the pressure is on the inside pushing out? Come on, I thought you said you know the model better than us. You're embarrassing yourself now, my friend. So yeah, just remember guys, if the science only works in the cartoons, then maybe it's not science. Maybe 
They're just repeating what they've been told and calling it intelligence. Yeah, please, someone come in the comments and explain to me how they can fly through space in a vacuum, in a thin metal tube, yet a 50-ton steel tanker on Earth folds like a napkin the moment the pressure is removed. Okay, as I said, the rail car collapse is outside air pushing in. The ISS is inside air pushing out. Same physics, opposite direction, totally different engineering problems. And there we go. Hopefully he sees this video. But what did we all think of that one? I'm gonna wrap this one up. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for Charlie Duke versus Bart Sabrell part three, the moon landing debate. See you then.